All right, here we go. <clears throat> Step one, let's build a seat. Sweet. All right, so we need sprue E for this. Sprue E is this fun guy that has tanks and cluster munitions or whatever those things are, as well as a bunch of cockpit pieces. Right, so these two are supposed to go together. Come on. Like so. Typically I don't build a lot of ejection seats. Because uh, they always suck. Stupid ejector pins. Alright. Now it should work. Hey, look, there's a... Spring has come early in Austin. We've already got the bugs buzzing around. All right. Yeah. Extra thin this. Shut up, compressor. See, the annoying thing about this is there's nowhere to grip it. You try and it just clacks. But it wants to pull apart on its own. That's why I need robots to help me build. Just here, robot. Stand here. Hold this damn piece while it hears. So, this is exciting, huh? Now these drop into E51, and we get this little E40 thing on the side. Hey, look at that. Things that fit. Nice. That E41 piece. Ah, oh, yeah, I see it. All right. This is where it's supposed to go. Like so. So now we go to E50. We've got more pieces that go on the ejection seat because that's fun. So I've got to give them credit. This is a uh, an involved bang seat that they've got going here. And uh, no time for messing around with this sucker. So I'd probably go resin. All right, fifty-nine. Voila. All right, so now we put the headrest in so we can little dollop.
We've got E3. Rock on. So, I'm quite a fan of the seat cushion because you don't really see this too often in injection molded plastic um, for ejection seats. Actual detail that looks like fabric. Now I will say if this were being built for real, the cool thing here is that you can paint this separately and then install it later with white glue, some sort of PVA, and you would be fine. <sighs> you know what I really don't want to do? I don't want to deal with the PE for this. So here is where on a regular build you would add your PE straps. Um, I'm not going to do that just because we know how PE belts work. And honestly, for this, I'd be going resin anyway. But it's got a relatively nice set of photo etch belts, so you know you can add those and have fun. So we're gonna move into step two here and add a couple more accoutrement to the bang seat. These are the doodads that go on the side. We've got. So we need to clean up the front and the back. It's a huge pain in the ass with these things, right? I don't get why they couldn't have put a sprue gate right here. You know, on, on the flat surface that's gonna get glued. Come on, guys. That would have been nice. So there we have it, an injection seat. Oh, hold on. We forget the bell of the ball here. Okay, so here we've got the ejection seat. And a real take is this is not bad for a kid ejection seat. Um, I would say it did kind of go off the rails with these little bastards here. And I would still buy resin, but you know, That'll do, big. Okay, now that the seat is done, it's time to move on to building up more of the cockpit. Come on, tweezers. Don't screw me now. Got a little bit of flash on this, uh, this little piece here, so we're gonna that away.
So again, with the sprue connection points here, I mean, right on top of the control stick. Guys, it's flat on the bottom. Put a piece there. Okay, now comes the fun part. E27 and E28, the rudder pedals. Check this out. They have put a sprue connector right smack in the middle of that. So we come to a fun situation here where the sidewall piece is not playing nice with its damn mounting holes. Easy way around that, right? Detail's not bad though. I mean, it could be better, but it's not bad. All right. All right, so now we're working on adding the cockpit sidewalls and stuff together. This is where Kitty Hawk falls apart. Jesus. All right. Glue the fuck out of this. See, having just come from Tamiya's F14, where these things go together like Lego bricks, this all feels kind of ridiculous. All right, then we need E35 up front. Complete the shit show.
there's flesh on the uh, combing here, so there was flesh on the combing. Here's another one of those uh, what the fuck sprue connections. The instrument panel fits in there pretty well. You can see it right there. Okay, I want to show you all something here. Here's the cockpit. You can see this trough up here in the front on top of the combing and the instrument panel. That is for the HUD. You can see it right here. Okay, so that's supposed to drop down on there. Okay, we've got a few pieces here. We've got E33. We've got you know, the clear part for the HUD glass. We've got these frame mounts. We've got E52 and this tiny little E29. So pay attention to E33 and E52. So right here, move you out of the way. This is E33, okay, fine. You know, you can see it's got the little mounts for the frame, for the HUD, it's got the HUD projector right there. Right. right here is E52. This is the piece that is supposed to mount in front of the HUD. As you can see here, the HUD has a little doohickey there to mount it onto. If you look on the other side, right there where it is supposed to mount in that tiny little crevice there is a fucking ejector pin mark right there you know these tweezers are not big i mean here is an index finger like have fun getting in there with sprue cutters to make that happen <sighs> this is why they piss me off yeah that's just not happening all right Change of plans. But first, you don't succeed. Cut that thing off. But I mean, the fact that we have to do this at all, kind of bullshit. All right, you know what? The HUD's not happening because I don't care enough. We all know how HUDs work. They're little, they're a pain in the ass. We're just going to drop this in here. Now, I don't know if the real thing has this giant box in it like this, or if this is just a shitty combing. I'm going to guess it does have a giant box like this, though. So there, I'm going to say that is the cockpit. So when I was going through the kit and looking at the sprues, there was that sense of guarded optimism. Like, hey, maybe, you know, Kitty Hawk's turned a corner here. Maybe... The detail is going to uh, be indicative of the entire kit, not just the detail. And then I started building it. So here we have the mostly assembled cockpit. Um, some laziness and some frustration got the better of me and I decided to screw it on a few pieces. There's a little tiny piece that goes back here that I don't know what the hell it does. Um, there's, the instructions are terrible in terms of showing how it fits into anything else. And then there's some pieces left off of the HUD up here. So overall, um, the ejection seat started off fine. Um, you know, it's it's a kid ejection seat though. It's it's got some promise. It's got you know the the detailing up here in the in the seat cushion, which is nice to see. But ultimately, it's still an injection molded injection, or it's an injection molded ejection seat, and there's resin out there. So. I would still replace that with resin. Um, the sidewalls, I like the detail. I'm happy with that. That to me is the high point of this cockpit. And the instrument panel is pretty nice too. Then you get everything else. So you have first rudder pedals with um, sprue gates right in the middle of almost impossible to reach places. Then you've got the fit of you know the sidewalls and front and rear bulkheads, which don't have any sort of mutually interlocking anything to really hold them up effectively while you test fit. You basically have to start gluing and then make it work. And that's one thing when we're doing a build review and it's all bare plastic, but once you have this shit painted and you're doing that, it's, you know, again, it's doable. Nobody's saying this is unbuildable. So, you know, stop right there with that bullshit. But just because it's buildable, 
it can still be a pain in the ass to build. It can still have a bunch of lazy engineering that makes it much more frustrating than it really should be. And that, you know, most other kits on the market nowadays somehow manage to get sidewalls and rear bulkheads together without having this weird cram session going on. Then what really takes the cake for me is this, uh, is the HUD here, the little front piece of the HUD had an ejector pin mark shoved right down into the hole that you need to use to mount it. And you know, you're talking micro surgery to get that out of there. It, why? It's a piece that you cannot physically see from the underside when the cockpit is installed. Put the sprue gate on the underside, you know, put the ejector pins somewhere else. Don't stick it right there. So, you know, or, you know, if it was impossible and they had to stick one there, make that the proud section. Put the recess on this E33 piece here, you know, and have it plug in instead of having it plug in the other way around. There are all kinds of very simple ways around this instead of having that stupid ejector pin mark right in the middle of where you need to be connecting pieces and where you can't easily access with anything. I mean, Micro Chisel had a tough time getting in there. You know, and how many modelers have these just lying around? I mean, I'm going to guess in the total population, these are relatively rare. So, you know, you're talking somebody armed with sprue cutters and an X-Acto knife. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Or they're going to slice their finger open. So, come on, Kitty Hawk. Anyway, initial take on the cockpit is that. It has promise. It also shows a lot of Kitty Hawk hallmarks. And that has me definitely concerned about the build going forward. So with that, let's move into, you know, instead of going from the cockpit to the front fuselage, because it's six fucking pieces, they go from the cockpit to the engine. So why not? Let's build the engine next. All right, on with the engine. 